Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how I installed my Xtool M1 Air Assist accessory kit. Uh, the reason you would want this is basically for cleaner cuts. It might even let you make cuts with less passes. So it's going to involve installing these brackets, which are going to hold the air hose. But to install those brackets, you're going to want a really clean surface so that you get a good adhesion. Uh, my cotton balls look like this after cleaning that inner lip. Got a whole video on how to maintain this machine, how to clean it, and how to clean the lens and all that. Uh, so look for that. The first step is to turn this thing over. Make sure you slide the laser module to uh, the point that's going to stay on the bottom when you turn it over, uh, the pivot point, if you will, just so it doesn't slide down the rail and smash against the side. Definitely something to avoid. If your machine still has this little cutting head holder, uh, the little blade holder, it just kind of magnets in there. If you still have that installed, go ahead and pop that out for now. I actually never use that part. Um, I'm really just interested in the laser for the X tool. But we're taking that little brass ring out and to uh, actually before we do that, let's go ahead and clean the lens real quick because I mean, we're here, it's accessible, might as well. So I like to use a cotton ball and just kind of push it down into where the lens is and give a gentle uh, turn. But you can use a Q-tip if you want to, or a cotton swab, whatever you want to call it. All right, so let's look at what we actually have to work with here. We got all these different brackets. Mentioned earlier, those are going to stick on that inner lip. Basically, this is just going to hold the tubing uh, in place. This is the nozzle that's going to fit onto the lens mount and blow air past where the beam makes contact. We got this little bracket that's going to connect to the laser diode itself. And then we got this little guy here that's actually going to hold the air assist when not in use. And then this is the lens mount, which will thread right on to where we take that brass ring off. This is a screwdriver that's going to let us take a cover off that we need to remove to get to everything. These little forceps here are actually going to unscrew that brass ring that we saw earlier for us. It's kind of weird, but it's effective. Uh, this is a little coupler for the hose that goes to the air pump, and there's this little plastic cylinder that kind of connects the two to uh, make sure they get a good seal. Super easy to install. You'll see that toward the end of the video, actually. This is a backup nozzle for the air assist kit, and this little package here has some little uh, O-rings and actually some backup laser lenses. So it's good to know if I accidentally scratch my lens up, I have a backup one I can install. All right, lastly, we have the tubing. I don't know how long it is exactly, but there are some white tape marks that are going to let you know what end you should attach to the nozzle that's going to go over the lens. Those little white tape marks kind of help you line up the tube with where it should go in the brackets so that everything moves freely. This bottom tray here, you might have to remove if you're not on the riser kit like I am. It's super simple, it just involves taking some screws out. So if you have that attached, that's going to be covering everything when you flip your machine over. Uh, mine is off all the time because I'm on this honeycomb riser kit that I definitely recommend. I should do a video on that. All right, so here's everything we have to install, and we have uh, pictograms to go by. So, yeah, not much. I'm not sure if they were supposed to include some text document, but didn't. But all I have is a pictogram booklet. So these two screws need to come out. That's holding this cover in place uh, that never really needs to go back on. I'm not sure why it's there to begin with, actually. But we're just going to take some time with this little screwdriver that was included to unscrew those. No problem at all. Super easy. Just take your time. Don't scratch the lens while you're doing it. And now we are going to take those included tweezers and I'm going to try to get you a nice close up. You stick each uh, nose of the tweezers on either side into these little holes on the side of this brass ring. Uh, this ring basically holds the lens in. So we're going to swap this out for this other component that was included that I showed you earlier. And that is going to hold the lens in and then also provide this metal ring that's going to help. Uh, it's going to help this fitting magnet into place really easily. So there I am just slowly turning this to get this brass ring to raise and then I'll pull it out. Go really slow here, don't scratch your lens with the tweezers. Seems like something that could happen real easy if you rush. So there it's loose. I'm gonna go ahead and take that out. 
Now, before you take this other piece and screw it back on, you are gonna wanna make sure that that lens is still sitting perfectly flat and centered. It could be off to one side, it could be tilted. You wanna correct that before you put this piece on. All right, so this is that other piece that holds the lens in place, but also is gonna provide a good connection for the nozzle that is gonna be connected to the air hose. This guy just threads on by hand, but these two little tabs on the side, you wanna make sure you leave those in the configuration shown. You want them out to the sides like this. And the reason for that is basically the hose has to start in a certain direction, so the nozzle has to be affixed in a certain direction for that to happen. So leave that ring in this position with the tabs uh, off to the sides like this. So that's what it looks like with the nozzle magneted on. Of course, the tube isn't attached yet. Here it is with the tube attached. You'll feel a strong magnet, just kind of click it into place. So the hose needs to start out in that direction. All right, so now we get to turn this machine back over and start placing the tubing where it should go. So I'm gonna tuck the rest of the tubing inside here to get it out of the way. And again, I'm gonna make sure that that laser module isn't sliding down the rail and smacking against the side because that's no good. All right, so I'm taking some time to clean the side of the laser module because there's a bracket that's gonna go right there. So just like this inner lip here, um, that needs to be clean as well. I'm gonna give that inner lip a once over with another cotton ball, just to be sure I'm gonna get good adhesion when I go to put these brackets in. So there's the first one, it's kind of odd looking, but this is how it goes onto the module. Uh, you can't really screw it up as long as you get it in that configuration. There's actually a little tab that kind of makes it go in the right spot. You'll see what I mean when you go to install it. So I wanna give you guys a major tip here. I highly recommend getting the nozzle connection, kind of like weird tension that's gonna to have to be on this tube. I recommend doing that after and kind of setting the tube through the other brackets first. If you try to arrange everything starting at the nozzle side, you can end up kind of spinning that fitting that we put on earlier that we threaded right on there. Mine kind of spun when I did that, so I liked to do it from the other side. So my pictograms didn't give a measurement for how far these brackets should go from the corner, but from every corner, the bracket should be about 35 millimeters. I finally found an X-Tool video that let that slide. So that's what I'm doing. I'm using my little uh, angle finder that has millimeters on it to measure that for me. You can use a ruler. All right, so we're getting all those brackets in place right where they should be, 35 millimeters from each corner. And these are gonna guide the air tubing around the machine so that the laser module can move freely to all four corners. And you wanna test that after you get these brackets installed. You'll see me doing that a little, a little later. So there we go, everything's looking good. All the brackets are installed where they should be. And now I'm using the little tape marks on the tubing that I mentioned earlier to line it up and get the tubing into all the brackets, or at least the two brackets on the right. The two brackets or three brackets, if you include that little one on the left, aren't gonna be used unless you're storing this uh, because you're not using the air assist. So while this thing's in use, the tubing is gonna run from the laser module up into the brackets on the right of the machine and then down through the machine and through the hole. Uh, if you're not using the honeycomb kit like I am, you're just going to be running out of a gap in the bottom right hand corner of the machine. You'll see it in the tray. Uh, if you're using the riser kit like I am, you're going to be running out of a dedicated little hole for the air assist kit. It's pretty obvious. So now you're going to see me take that tubing, run it along those left brackets, and then see where this nozzle wants to fall naturally. That's where I go ahead and affix this last bracket that holds it. And there you go. You see me changing from out of use to in use with the tubing and the nozzle. And we're feeding it through the bracket on the laser module and then snapping it in place. So. So you've seen me just feed the tube down to the bottom right of my machine, and this is the hole in the riser kit that the tube comes out of nice and clean. So we go ahead and take all the slack out of that. So now everything's set up. Here's the tube running from the laser module and the nozzle in the correct orientation. I can move to all four corners of the machine freely. Nothing's getting tangled, and there are minimal bends in the tubing. I think the manual guides you so that you should only have one main bend in the tubing. 
That's what the nozzle looks like attached underneath at that correct angle. Sorry, that was a tough shot to get, unless I inverted the machine again. So lastly, we need to attach these little uh, connectors to the air pump itself. So we're going to use that plastic sheath, put it on top of the fitting. Uh, going to go ahead and get that on the little nub that sticks out of this air pump. And then we're going to go ahead and stick the other end of our black tubing into that. And you can kind of feel uh, how far you need to push it in. Just push it in as far as you can, and that little connector is going to grab it and make a nice seal. And we are done. So now we just got to go ahead and test this thing out. I went ahead and made a file that uses this little spider web image. I did mean to cut it. I didn't get all the way through um, because I had my settings a little wrong. But you can see there's a huge difference uh, without the air assist and with the air assist. So when you get these tight turns and lots of them, the scorching gets pretty crazy. You can see the scorching on the text was pretty bad over here. And then the scorching in these tight turns here, these small sections, was pretty bad. So a huge difference with the air assist here. Uh, the lettering is a little scorched because I went a little uh, slower than I needed to with the laser head. But here we go. Flipping over, you can see everything's a lot more consistent and even with the air assist here, even though I didn't get through. Things are a little more sporadic over here without it. And there are just some, some high burn areas and some lower burn areas. So there you have it. I'm not really satisfied that I didn't get through that piece, so I'm probably going to put another video out, maybe a quick one, just demonstrating the air assist a little more thoroughly. So go ahead and look out for that. Please consider subscribing if you like this at all. Uh, if you got anything out of it, you know, throw me a like. Help me grow on YouTube. I'd appreciate it. All right. Till next time. Peace.